Yeah, what is the same here?
Good morning and welcome. As we begin our celebration, I invite everyone to please rise and turn toward the baptismal font to greet Father John and the Coluni family. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Bar died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory.
Let us pray. A God whose nature is it, is it always to forgive and show mercy. We humbly implore you for your servant Val, whom we have called to journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in his everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and is with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. The word of the Lord. have 
prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. The Lord my shepherd, there is nothing I shall reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I saw only the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order had passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give a gift from the spring of life-giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. with you and with you yesterday. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test him and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. 
Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these... Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We have come here this morning to celebrate the life of God. We are here to give thanks to God for the blessings which God bestowed upon him in this life. That's why we talk about the salvation of his life. We are thanking God for giving him to us and the blessings that God gave to him. We are also here to ask God whom mercy and forgiveness belong to deliver him from the bonds of death and admit him to the joyful company of the saints in heaven. My dear brothers, Jesus Christ, thank you for coming. And in this Mass, as I've said already, we are praying for the repose of the soul of our dear one, Val. Thank you also for coming to share the soul of the family, especially Jimmy, his wife. When he was in the hospital, I went there and I saw Jimmy just holding his hands, not leaving the hands. She knew he was departing from her and so she remained in that rigid atmosphere to touch him with, like I would say, the last love that she had for, uh, for him. And so we are here to pray that God of all consolation may console you and your family, may give you the comfort that you need. And we are also here to support you in our praise, in your moment of grief and loss. It's not easy to lose your dear one. No, everybody knows that. Dear friends, our hearts are weighed down by grief at the death of our dear one. And I know your hearts are weighed down today by the death of your dear one, your husband, your father, your grandfather, friend, and a church member but, dear friends, we say there is a solution for every problem except for death. In life, if there's anything, we seek to find solution. When the pandemic broke out, the scientists try and try, and now we have some sort of vaccine. But for death, since the beginning of creation, we are still trying to find solution for death, but not yet. The Bible tells us that 
we are made for life. No, God made us for himself. He gave us life. So we are made for life. We are made to experience the life-giving presence of God, our Creator. But we see that doing life, illness, old age, drains our life away. So it means that even though we are made for life, a time will come you will die. That's why in today's first reading we read, there is an appointed time for everything. And then we continue, a time to be born and a time to die. So it means that, yes, once we have life, our lives will be drained away gradually as we, we, we grow. So it means that a time will come, will be no more. There is time for uh, the, the, uh, to die. My dear friends, but in the second reading, Jesus tells us that he is the beginning and the end of our life. No, the life we have is a gift of God to us. And whatever we have in life is also a gift of God uh, to us. And so Jesus tells us that he is the beginning and the end of our life. So whatever we do, we should do in him. We should do with him. And so we read, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Dear brothers and sisters, Va, our dear one, saw and accepted Jesus as the beginning and the end of his life. He lived in him, he lived with him, and he lived for him. We know him to be a devoted Catholic. I always see him and the journey here, Sunday at Lemdete Mass. They will come every Sunday, almost every Sunday. You will see them, they will. They, you see this side of the of the church. So today that I'm seeing Jenny there is like a wrong place for her. I know her right place is this corner. But today she cannot sit here. So since the, the passing of by any time I come to Mass, I look at the place. And the sad thing is I see uh, only Jenny, but not Val. But I I know he was a very devoted Catholic, a very strong member of the church. And then I will say a good friend. A good friend in the sense that, you know, when the pandemic broke, we closed the church. And then after we opened, people were not coming to church in their numbers. So after every mass, he will come to me and say, Father, don't worry, they will come. Father, don't worry, they will come. He will come and just shake my hands or just uh, wait at, at me and say, Father, don't worry, they will come. It shall be well. And to use his popular phrase, keep the faith. He always tell me, keep the faith. And also, we know he was a strong member of our one of our small Christian community. So one time, we decided even to break that community. It was growing bigger. He said, no, 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 no. Let us keep to this group. We like, we have become friends, brothers and sisters. So let us keep this group as one. Dear friends, so I know many of you have many good things to say about VAR. But I'm going to say mine now. And then uh, when you read Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 12, the reading we, uh, we had this morning, we, did, we ended at uh, verse 9. But if you continue to verse 12, now I see that verse 12 as the summary of the life of Va. And I quote, I perceive that there is nothing better for us than to be joyful and to do good as long as we live. I perceive that there is nothing better for us than to be joyful and to do good as long as we live. And I know Va understood this and he lived it. So as you wrote in his obituary, Va was a warm and loving person and always took the time to lift others up with a smile, greeting all words of encouragement. And he asked us through. 
So for me, this is the true summary of his life. He was somebody who always wanted people to be happy. Wanted people to be happy. He himself was a happy person, a happy man. He would always smile at you. If you are not a happy man, you will never smile at anybody. But he was a happy man. He was he lived a joyful life, I can see. And then he did not keep this joyful life only to himself. He wanted others to have a share in it. That's why, as he wrote, and that's true, he was always smiling at people, greeting them, and lifting them up. So, my dear friends, by so doing, we also wrote in the obituary that he derived great joy from his work. My dear friends, if you say we derive great joy from our work, it's not the money that we get from it, but the, the, the desire to save humanity. Because the work we do, we do not only for ourselves, but for others. So once he derived the great joy from his work, it means that he had that desire to save humanity, to do all that he could to help others, to enjoy life, to be happy. So, dear friends, as we say farewell to him in this Mass, let us pray that we may also take time to lift others with our good words. You know, the gospel reading was about the good Samaritan. Va, I would say, was a good Samaritan. And so we must also say, try to be good Samaritan. So to continue his memory, his good words, let us try to be good Samaritans. Let us try to lift people up, to smile at them, to give them words of encouragement. So, dear brothers and sisters, when I look at the, at the, at the verse the, of the gospel last night, when I was preparing, I thought it was a mistake. But I haven't seen any food that we really have this reading. And so it was too late for me to call back to, to, to verify. So today when I entered the church, the first thing I, I, I came to do was to, to come and see the, uh, if it was a right verse for me. And then I said, yes. That's why it was like I quote through all the books for funerals. I didn't see that, that chapter and verse for funerals. So that was stress here. And then, yes, and it's very special because of the life of our dear Val. So, my dear friends, as I've said already, let us all try to be good Samaritans to uh, others, to help others. The, the reading uh, 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 began. Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Yes, sometimes we want to do good to only the people we know, the people around us. But we must extend that goodness to others, those we don't know. So this is what our dear father did. So let us continue to be good Samaritans to others, to be joyful and share that joy with others, to extend our good work to others, to use whatever we have to save humanity. So, dear friends, all that we should do as human beings is to focus our lives and what we do on others also. Let us uh, let others uh, to be happy, to help them to be comfortable. Let us always lift the spirit of others. So, like Val, from today onwards, we should learn, if you are not doing it already, to smile at people in order to lift them up, to greet people, in order to uh, let them be happy, and also to use our work to help others to have a joyful life. May the good Lord, who has called God to himself, give him a place in his kingdom. Amen.
Let us stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confidence that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Val, who trusted in the Lord, may he find refreshment, rest, and peace in the company of all the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, oh, hear our yeah. prayer. For Val's family, especially Jenny, Bobby, Maribeth, and his loving grandchildren. May God heal their grief and strengthen their faith and hope in the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who strive to be faithful disciples of Christ, living by God's truth, lifting up the lowly, building God's kingdom of peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the community of St. Mary's Church, for Father John, for Deacon Rick, and all who shared with Val their love and friendship in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered at the Lord's table to worship and pray for Val, may we always be thankful for the gift of his life and find comfort in the memories we hold. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, especially son John, parents John and Jean, and in-laws Larry and Fran, may they and all members of the Kaluni family find eternal joy in God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let us now act on individual intentions. God, our shelter and our strength, you will listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the praise you offer for our departed vow. Cleanse him of his sins and grant him the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Va, you beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He stood the right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in Him the hope of the blessed resurrection has done, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. As to that end, we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy there for this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do for so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and gave it thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we pour out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For us to celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, he offer you, Lord, 
the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt this word to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, you will gather into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring prayer to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Barry our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Val, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in the death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to go as eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, the God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, our grand honor is yours forever and and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we are there to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from Give us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, you may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as to await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lift and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who come to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not ready to share it on the Bible. I will see the world my soul shall be healed.
a time to plant and a time for harvest, a time to eat and a time to part. God's word is like the farmer's seed, rooted in joyful loving heart. A harvest that overflows to everything. There is a season, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to Time for harvest, a time to meet, and a time to part. A time to meet, and a time to Let us pray. Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Val may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please sit. Hello, I'm Bobby, and with my sister Mary Beth, along with our brother John, we have the special privilege of having Val Kaluni as a father. While we'll miss our dad so much, he lived a full and meaningful life, and we want to share some of our memories with you. First, we want to thank everyone our family and friends and the St. Mary's community who came together to honor our father's memory today. Your support means so much. Coming together at these milestones renews the bonds that connect and sustain us. Years ago, I interviewed my parents during happy hour in Maine. I asked my dad what advice he'd give others based on his life. He started with, Recognize the importance of your family. Our dad often shared stories about growing up in an Italian working class neighborhood in Amsterdam, New York. While money wasn't always plentiful, love and family support were. He loved the home on 2 Carmichael Street because it was such a welcoming place to family and friends. Our dad encouraged us to support each other and develop strong bonds. It gave him such great delight to see all of the family together, and he and my mom worked hard to make their camp in Maine a haven for connecting. Second, our dad encouraged us to work hard and do your best. In some ways, his life followed the arc of the American dream. He shared with us how he was not a strong student in high school and enlisted in the Army at 17 to serve in Korea. Partway through his service, he volunteered when they needed a typist. He didn't even know how to type. <laughs> he worked with a group of officers who encouraged him to go to college. When he returned to the States, he convinced the dean at St. Lawrence University to give him a chance, and he was granted admission as long as he could keep a B average. He worked diligently and engaged study help from a group of guys who became lifelong friends. My dad went on to pursue a rewarding career in human resources as a result of his education. This experience awakened 
in my dad a zest for learning through reading, engaged dialogue, and pursuing new interests and experiences. He was always sharing his insights with us, mailing each person a clipping of articles with highlighted highlights and notes in the margin, calling out all the important points, the cliff notes. While Valentine is not a common name these days, it always seemed an especially appropriate name for our dad. He was a very loving person. His third piece of advice was, try to love always. It's potent medicine. While each of us kids and grandkids and the rest of our family were very different, he made each of us feel loved unconditionally. In fact, our dad loved connecting with people in every possible venue. I'm often amazed that early in his career, he thought he might become an accountant. One of the ways he expressed his special brand of love was to inject fun and humor into every situation. Some of my favorite moments were of times we spent up in Maine as a family. He was a great storyteller, and when we'd have campfires, he'd tell stories of the travails of Bulu and Zulu, two kids modeled after my brother and me. The stories always involved creaky doors and a lot of suspense. He was often singing when he washed dishes and drove us around an odd assortment of pop songs, army songs, and school cheers. He was never afraid to be silly. He'd honk the horn every time we crossed a state line on a car trip or other random times claiming there was a snake in the road. <laughs> I remember an epic family volleyball tournament played in Maine where the males and females were on different teams and my dad and Aunt Nancy coined the, the battle, the wombs, the females, against the wums, which stood for wow you men, my dad's creation. He was a loyal participant in happy hour and would find ways to engage even the quietest of people. Not only was he a great storyteller, but when he listened to you, you really felt heard. If you were sharing something sad, his face would crumble in sympathy. And if you were telling him something exciting or happy, his eyebrows would bounce up and down in anticipation and glee. He had a way, a way of making each person he interacted with feel special. But the place he really let his colors show was on the dance floor. My parents went jitterbugging on one of their first dates, and afterwards, my mom said to her father, I think I'm going to marry this guy. He had all the moves, and whether it was dancing at your wedding or in the camp at Maine, he made everyone smile. Serving others was a core important value. Our dad loved to talk about Virginia Tech's motto, Oop Prosum that I may serve. He served in many ways, but especially in mentoring people to help them find their path, grow, and develop. He did this with all of our family and many that he worked with. He was known as the miracle worker when he counseled students. We'd, when we would get together, Dad would find opportunities to get each of us one-on-one -on -one and take us out to breakfast or lunch and do a check-in. Dad would call this the Val program. Well, we called it that. He was never forceful and would often end his counseling session by saying, but what do I know? I'm just a little kid from Amsterdam, New York. As a teen, I blazed my own trail, pushed every boundary, and created some amazing parenting challenges. Dad and Mom were persistent and forgiving and loving. Dad and my mom provided support when I was a single parent getting my education. And as my family grew, Dad was an integral part of our multi-generational family and would be there in the mornings to make the kids breakfast and jump in to help with child care when needed and even show up at my door randomly being near me, just needing to stop by and say hi. He believed in me and was my biggest cheerleader. 
He modeled what it means to be an engaged and loving human being, and I am inspired by his example and committed to honoring his memory by living these principles in my own life. And his last words of advice were, always have hope. There are always solutions to life's pressing problems. We found some notes Dad had written for his memorial. At the end, next to final thoughts, he wrote, life treated me well. Yes, it did. And you treated us all well, Dad. Your life was a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Let us stand. <clears throat> Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Ba. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Father of mercies, we commend our brother Ba in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestow upon Ba in this life. They are signs to us of our goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to, her, to his resting place.
Thank mm-hmm. you.